Hello and welcome back to the channel for another College TF review. Today we're taking a look at the next Rise of the Beast Maximal, Rhinox. I'm really happy to get this guy and I've been loving re-watching the movie and over and over again. I love the Rise of the Beast movie. I think it's fantastic. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go see it. Highly recommend it or get it um, online or however you stream. Highly recommend the movie. And I am loving the figures for this line as well. So finally we have Studio Series 103 Rhinox. Um, I got mine over at All Time Toy Store. Check out the link in the description below to get yours. This is a fantastic figure. Another amazing Rise of the Beast figure that's just amazingly detailed, well painted, well sculpted, and a ton of fun to play with. He's amazing to pose, and both modes look equally amazing. So let's get straight into this review. So of course, we'll save the figure for last after we take a quick look at the box here. So cool image of the CG render. Real, I really like the design of these beasts where they're mainly metal but have some beast aspects to them and then like the chains linked throughout and some rust. These Maximals have been through a lot fighting Terracons for a long time trying to protect the key. Really cool image of Rhinox in his robot mode on the side there. We only see it briefly in the movie during the battle scene but it is very awesome, very epic when we do see it. His product shots on the back, lots of words, another cool shot of his beast mode on the side. He is of course a Voyager class. Then we do get instructions, very easy to follow, very simple. And of course we get his display base. Cool scene here, this is not actually really a scene from the movie. Uh, maybe it was a cut scene or something, but it definitely looks like some part of Peru maybe um, in those temples when they're searching for the other part of the transwarp key. So nice display base nonetheless to have if you'd like to display your figures with the base. But here is a figure himself and I mean, man, just like, look how he's glinting off the light. Nice and shiny, looks fantastic. And like no kibble. It's like all the kibble that he's got, I think is very accurate to the movie and the CG design. Hasbro did a fantastic job with this guy. So let's take a look at that head sculpt here. Nice, that, that ball joint is a little bit stiff and it's a little hard to reach because of the way it's cowled, but it looks really good. So definitely not complaining. Nice silver there. Would have been nice if those eyes were a little more green in person. There is a touch of green in there. It doesn't really show through on the camera, but there is green on the inside. Um, it's just very hard to see. Would have been nice if that was a little brighter, but certainly very nice. Um, nice dry brushing effect here throughout the whole figure. It's gray plastic, but he has like a silver dry brush. And then the gold looks really cool. Lots of chip paint. You can see in the sculpt, there's like lots of cuts and stuff that are actually sculpted in, which is really nice. Very much resembles what we see from the movie. You can see I have him, he comes with his one weapon, which is his mace, one brutal weapon, but suits the character. You can see the nice gold detail on the inside of the biceps there. And I really like the layered panel look here on the legs, really cool. Looks really nice. I'd say even though there's a fair amount of just, you know, gray plastic on this guy, they did a nice job mixing up what colors they used. I mean, the video cut out there for a second, I should be back. But yes, as I was saying, really nice layering of all the panels and really nice sculpting. Fantastic figure, fantastic figure. So first, take a look at his weapon here before we get into articulation. So it does come with his mace, nice silver, otherwise just two different shades of gray plastic, but looks really nice. And for beast mode, you can collapse it like this, tabs in like that. Um, and you could actually store this on him in robot mode, just with this port, which is the same port you would use in beast mode to store it. So if you want that look going on, you can. It actually looks pretty cool, I think. So it's definitely fun and goes back to, you know, what we saw in the Maximals from Beast Wars where they had their weapons on their backs, I like how Cheetor can keep his swords on his back and um, Primal can also keep his swords on his back. So let's get into articulation real quick. So we can get a little bit of side to side motion here. Again, very stiff and a little hard to access, but it does go side to side. You can look down a little bit, you can look up ever so slightly and it does rotate. Not the full 360 though because of the sculpt, but you don't need him to do that. So, but very stiff joint, but very nice. At the shoulders, this is the one problem I have is that it is really easy to pop these off um, just by articulating him just because of their size. But they do thankfully pop right back on. Actually, this isn't 
fully in. There we go. Just a little mistransformation there. But so they do hinge out of the way, so you can get nice 90 degree there, full 360 rotation, 90 degrees at the elbow, along with elbow swivel there. And we also get a wrist swivel. So very nice rotation, uh, articulation there from the arms, nice fully, you know, the way swivel goes to there, it's actually fully uncompromised. You move the tail out of the way. He does have, his tail just kind of hangs out and back. But I think that is accurate to the CGI. So that is cool. Then you can move this skirt out of the way. You can kick up to a very good degree. Rhinox high kick. You can also kick back very far. And you can bend his knee quite well as well. It does also bend this way due to beast mode. Um, but that's what this panel here coming down kind of supposed to help prevent some of the upper bending. And then at the feet, you do get very good ankle tilt um, and they do also rock back. So definitely a maximized maximal here. He's got all the articulation you could possibly need. Maximum articulation is what the maximals need for sure. So to bring in some comparisons here, here is Cheetor from Rise of the Beasts, the new series and Air Razor. Since we never saw her actually transform in the film, thought it would be more suitable to show her in beast mode here. So there you go. That's how they scale together. I think they look fantastic. Very representative of what we see in the film. Maximals are definitely quite large, um, all roughly Voyager size. I mean, even Air Razor, you know, if you just compare her wingspan, you know, she's, she's, uh, she's a big bird. So there you go. Pretty cool. Definitely a nice assortment we're getting here from Rise of the Beasts, and I can't wait to finish it off. So let's get into transformation. So to begin with, you want to take his abs and just put them down the center. Then come to this whole front piece. This folds down. Now there are little grooves here on the side, which these center pieces do to slot into once you get it at the right angle. Then you want to take this top section. It's got a second joint in there. And there's these two tabs, which go into these two slots to form Rhinox's belly. Do that. Then you want to come to his back. And typical, you know, Beast Wars fashion, you also usually want to, it's easier to attach that. Detach that too, just so you have, this does tab into his back, so just detach that just so you have some more clearance to work with. Bring this whole section down. Of course, see the rhino head hiding in there. And you just want to flip this neck piece out, like so, and pull the head out. And then you also want to open up the head to pull out the horn. Pretty good compacting in there. It's pretty amazing that this whole beast mode head fits inside of his chest. So then you want to take this whole section, bring it back over top, just tabs right into place. And then this next section slots in there. And there you have the front part. Whoops, I forgot one step here. You do also need to pull in these little horns here. It was a nice, neat addition for robot mode to really match that CGI. So there you go. So once you have those in, now you can bring the neck piece down. Do that. I mean, you could leave them out if you want to. If you want a bit of a more spiky <laughs> rhinoceros, you certainly could. Uh, next, you want to come to the arms here, and you just want to open up from the inside. Then you want to rotate the fist, full 180 there, and swing it inside and then collapse that back in. Now you have the rhino foot and rotate this forward, close the shoulder pad like so. And then this is all on a double hinge joint here. So you just wanna pull it out and you got this tab which goes into the slot and it kind of sits in at an angle here like that. So you should have something looking along those lines. And it's easier just to kind of keep it out of the way for now. Do the other side, so same thing. Open up the arms. Rotate the fist around, swing this whole section around, and then collapse all that back up. Then rotate back around here, and compress on that double hinge joint. And you have those front legs done. And then you just want to straighten them out in front of his belly, like that. It looks a little weird right now, but once we get the back legs done, it certainly um, looks a lot better. So now for the back section here, make sure this is tapped in. There we go. Yep. 
or the back section here, you do want to go ahead and take these little kind of rubber plasticky pieces there on his skirt and just push them out of the way so that they, so that the knee pieces are visible. And you want to take this skirt, the center skirt section, and this does tab into the scratch there. So like that. And then you just want to overlap these little wingish pieces on the inside of the leg there. And then you want to use that forward joint of the leg and just pull everything forward to its maximum extent. And there you have Rhinox almost fully in his beast mode. One last step here. And that is to finish with the back section here and solidify everything. So this section just kind of slides in and there are a few tab and slot connections on the inside. Just lines everything up, kind of solidifies those legs. And here you have Rhinox in his beast mode at being Rhinoceros. Certainly a suitably, suitably ferocious beast mode for to match his very aggressive robot mode. So pretty awesome looking. I mean, the profile on this looks fantastic. Much better than what we saw from the mainline Rhinox. Very clean, very smooth, no weird gaps. I mean, a little bit of a weird gap in here, but from the side, from when you just have them, if you're not looking at them like this, you have them like this, as you would on a shelf or just playing with them, you can tell that he looks really good. He's got the rhino belly and everything. I really like the layered paneling effect here on the back. Looks really cool. Very much like what we see um, in those trailers of them walking in the woods. And then taking a look at the head here. Again, there is a little bit of green in those eyes. It's very hard to see. Would have been nice if they used either a little more paint or a brighter shade. Um, his mouth does open. There is no cannon on the inside of his mouth though, like we see in the movie, but this is very tiny, so not that surprising, but very nice detail work. Lots of gunmetal colors. And again, it's like kind of a shiny gray plastic with some dry brushing here and there to really make it look like it's metal. Again, not many details we didn't see in robot mode other than really this rhino head. Everything else we've kind of already seen. It's just manipulated a little bit. The one other piece I did forget here in transformation is you are supposed to collapse the legs in here, the shins. So sorry about that. There you go. And now the, seat, the feet um, set a little more flush and it just keeps the legs a little bit narrower in profile for beast mode. Um, there is that little step though. So don't forget that. <laughs> that is a, a little tricky part of transformation just to you know, leave out. But very nice looking beast mode for sure. Let's, I'll go ahead and transform up, maximize uh, Cheetor and do some comparisons. And here we got all of the Maximals together. And this is what they're looking like. And I think they scale really well with one another based on what we saw in the movie. Air Razor, of course, was one gigantic bird. Then Rhinox and Cheetor together look pretty good. Cheetor is definitely more slender, but they're both pretty tall. Definitely close in height in robot mode, but a very different build. And there you go. Really loving this cast here we're building up for, in studio series from the Rise of the Beast movie. And I can't wait to get my hands on Optimus Primal along with, of course, that elusive um, Optimus Prime. It looks like at this point I am getting uh, KOs earlier than I'll get the official Buzzworthy Bumblebee or Takara version of that SS-102 Optimus Prime, I believe is his number. So it's a little unfortunate that that was an exclusive item in the US, but nonetheless, I'll get him at some point and I can't wait to complete the cast. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are not a subscriber already. Really appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next review. Again, check out that link in the description to get your studio series Rise of the Beast Rhinox and I'll catch you in the next review. Thanks for watching.